okay so we will uh, start the class the uh, last class we discussed about uh, longitudinal dynamics that uh, we have seen what prediction of vehicle performance okay so now we will be uh, seeing uh, some other uh, topics uh, now and we will be completing this uh, unit today. okay So now we will be discussing longitudinal force in a driving wheel. Okay. So already we might have seen in the second unit. So second unit, some topics will be uh, repeated again in uh, unit 4. So as you can uh, see, for a wheel, from engine, we are getting a power. Okay. So that power will be transmitted as a rotational uh, speed, that is uh, R omega. Okay. And uh, that rotational speed will be transferred as a linear uh, speed, that is Vx. The difference between the linear uh, speed and rotation speed will be what? A slip. Okay. So you can uh, see in the sketch, Vx stands for longitudinal velocity and omega stands for rotational velocity. So already I, I might have uh, told you, this is what will happen in a contact patch. You know, there will be uh, two regions, static region and uh, sliding region. So static region, what will happen? The springs will, be, will not be moving uh, towards side okay so whereas you can uh, see in sliding region the springs will get uh, deflected okay so because uh, in static region is a start of contact patch more deflection will not be there that is when i'm going to model the tire as a spring okay in a sliding region what will happen the springs will be getting uh, deflected okay so already we have discussed about this so you can uh, see a start of contact patch we are having a static region and after that we are having what sliding region and the uh, end of the contact patch will be having the again the spring at the same position okay so you can uh, see in the sliding region my thread element no it will be bending uh, forward as you can uh, see the shape it is bending will uh, forward okay so from this i can uh, frame a relation for uh, longitudinal force see this bending deflection no that is why you can uh, see why the springs are getting deflected like this. It is due to what? Slip. That is, I can say, slip velocity. Okay? That is, I can say, slip velocity. That is, I can write R omega minus Vx. Okay? So that will be the reason for bending deflection. And time duration, how long uh, the threads are going to be in contact patch. Okay? So this time duration is inversely proportional to this rotational uh, speed. The rotational speed is i time duration will be less if rotational speed is uh, uh, more no time duration will be less and less means time duration will be uh, more okay so you have to understand this uh, time duration is inversely proportional to the time duration so i can write that is a deflection is directly proportional to the slip velocity in denominator i can write what this absolute velocity that is r uh, r omega so i uh, in uh, combining all i can write what maximum deflection is proportional to r omega minus vx divided by this absolute velocity r omega okay that is this is for acceleration during acceleration what will happen this will be the primary concern that is the engine power okay so when deceleration what will happen instead of r omega we will have what v so now we'll be uh, seeing one problem. Please uh, note down. That is, uh, if you're having a note, no, you can uh, please uh, write the given data alone. Because already all the notes have been uh, shared with you. 
that is you can uh, see you are having a motor car okay motor car uh, wheel base okay i think wheel base is what longitudinal distance between our uh, two axle front axle and the uh, rear axle okay so it is given how much 2.75 so that is you write here l uh, that is a b okay b is 2.75 center of gravity will be a 0.85 that is h h is 0.85 and you can see 1.15 behind the front axle that is uh, the cg no it is 1.15 behind the front axle if i am going to say in front of the front axle it will be l okay if i am saying behind the front axle you should not write it this as l you should write what l is equal to wheel base minus this Okay, that's two point seven five minus one point one five. That is one point six will be L. Yeah. Okay, so we are having what coefficient of attraction? That is point six. The uh, friction coefficient between tire and uh, ground. Okay, so what you have to do? You have to calculate the maximum possible acceleration. There is four wheels. The vehicle is driven on four wheels and driven on front wheels and driven on rear wheels. Already we have seen this uh, problem. Okay, that is in the last week. So let me show it to you. Yeah, see this. B stands for wheel base, and H stands for height of the CG from the ground. And C is giving what? If is giving distance of CG in front of the front axle means directly I can take as L. He is giving distance of CG. Behind the front axle, that is, he is giving what B minus L. So what we have to do for finding L, we have to subtract uh, this term from B. Okay, so that only you can find L. Okay, so you can uh, recap the formulas. What we have seen, this is for the uh, front wheel. That is, you can see front wheel acceleration can be found like this. Then reactional force. Everything we have seen, rear wheel drive, what will happen? Okay. So you have to recap that uh, formulas. Okay. So now uh, you can uh, see that is uh, how to find acceleration. That is when I am having a four wheel drive. No? That is first one uh, driven on four wheels. Okay. So first we go to the that is uh, without uh, transfer. With the third differential, so now see with the out the third differential. I am not having transfer case, so you can see how to find acceleration. F by g is equal to new, so F acceleration is equal to new into g. Okay, then how to find uh, the force, the tractive force, that will be new into w. Okay, then I can uh, equate what this uh, w by g F is equal to new w. So W W will get get cancelled. From that only we are getting what F by G is equal to. Okay. So here, uh, how to find this uh, tractive force? There is a F R and uh, yeah, there is a when you are going to add R R plus R F, it will be W. So what you can uh, do now? Multiply the coefficient of friction with weight of the vehicle. The total tractive force will be obtained. Okay. So first of all, we are starting with the four wheel drive without the third differential. So it is a university problem. Huh? So see, without I have written here, but it is not uh, scanned. It is without the third differential. Okay. So F acceleration is equal to new g 0.6 into 9.81. So you can uh, write like this. Now uh, I am writing uh, other things. Okay. Then uh, now I am going to write without third differential. Now it has been uh, scanned again. Okay, this is just called energy acceleration. Now I am going to find with the third differential. So with the third differential means two criteria: slip occurring at front, slip occurring at the uh, rear. See, slip occurring at the front means reaction at the front is less than reaction at R. Okay, so for this already I have uh, we have seen the derivation. That is what will be happening when slip occurring at the front. What is the expression for F by G? 
So what you have to do now, you have to write F by G and you have to take the G into right hand side. So Q new L G. So this formula, find this acceleration. So this is the acceleration for a vehicle all wheel drive with the third differential, that is with the transfer case, assuming slip occur at the front. Okay. Then uh, RF reaction at the front will be having that expression of find out. Okay, in terms of W, why not? In this problem, the vehicle weight is not given. So all the reactions will be in terms of W. So similarly for a front wheel drive acceleration, you have to take this formula. Rear wheel drive, you can see what is the acceleration. Okay. So you can uh, see that is a uh, with the transfer case, no acceleration will be more compared to front wheel and the rear wheel. And without transfer case, transmission loss is less. You can see the maximum acceleration is coming 5.886. Okay. With the third differential, 5. And front wheel drive, 2 point, and rear wheel drive, 3. Okay. Okay. Now we'll be uh, seeing uh, the other. Uh, Criteria that is a prediction of vehicle uh, mass. Okay, so you have to understand the vehicle is moving in uh, uh, longitudinal direction. That is, we are having what translation motion. The vehicle is not getting rotated. The vehicle is moving in linear uh, direction. Okay, but that linear direction, the translation motion is coupled to rotational motion. Okay, from engine I am getting rotation power. No, so that is uh, going to be coupled to the translation motion. So what I have to do now, I have to consider the inertia of reciprocating parts, okay. uh, sorry, rotating parts. So this inertia will play an important role on vehicle acceleration. For considering the inertia effect only, we are having what? Mass factor. So you have to remember what is a mass factor means. Mass factor has been uh, devised so that the inertia of rotating parts on vehicle acceleration can be accounted. Okay. So I can uh, write that is a uh, forces, that is a tractive force. Okay. Uh, then uh, summation of uh, this resistance, whatever the resistance force is going to act now. So it will be the total force that is going to drive the like. So this one now I can write what mass into acceleration. In that I can put inertia effect. Okay. That is you might have studied your physical MA. When you are going to uh, consider this inertia effect, no, there is inertia of rotating parts. What you can put? Gamma m into m. Okay. So gamma m for passenger car, we are having a empirical relationship 1.04. So by experimentally, they have found this. Okay. Where uh, g is gear ratio. So note down this formula. Not on this formula, ma. Now you can uh, see I omega is what rotating inertia of the wheels. Okay. So, what are the inertia components? Uh, that is, uh, what are the components for which inertia have to be considered? There is a rotating parts. We have to consider inertia. That is uh, where you are considering wheel. Okay. So over the wheel only we are having the tire and other things. Okay. So what you have to do? We have to consider the rotating inertia of the wheels. And you are putting IG no. So it means what no? There is uh, the components which will be rotating equivalent to the engine speed. Okay. Engine is uh, getting rotated. So what are the components which is going to rotate it? Comparable with the engine speed. Okay. So that and all uh, will come under IG square. IG. Okay. So now I am going to start uh, the easiest part in unit 4. So with this uh, vehicle dynamics uh, concept is over. That is uh, what are the forces, how to design and other things. Now we will be starting what? The safety systems. Okay. That is, this is very, very important. There is a 
with advancement in technology we are having many safety system that is we are having what anti lock braking system traction control system elect uh, yeah, electronic brake force distribution system so that my vehicle performance will be good and i can maintain the stability safety and directional control and other things okay so in that uh, i'll be explaining few system other system you might have already studied in automotive chassis okay so first of all for anti lock braking system how to design how it is going to work i am going to explain you okay so already you might have uh, seen why slip is coming okay so slip what happens no uh, in the tire the thread elements are compressed okay when it's going to enter into the contact uh, region and uh, when it's going to come out no it has to be elongated into the same level but it will not be happening so the rotational speed which is translate which is converted into translate uh, speed no will be less so that you can uh, see r omega minus v divided by r omega into 100 okay listen carefully i am going to explain the slip so this is very very uh, important where v is linear speed of the tire center that is at uh, tire center no the linear speed i am putting as v okay if you are having any doubt you can go to the last sketch see at tire center i am measuring one uh, speed no that is what linear speed of the tire center okay the omega is angular speed of the tire so here what i am going to do no listen carefully i am dividing everything by r omega 1 and uh, minus v by r o okay so now listen instead of putting this uh, v by r omega no there is a term called re that is equivalent uh, radius that is you have to understand v is equal to r omega so r is equal to what v by omega that is equivalent radius that is a uh, in uh, related to converting the rotational motion into translatory motion there will be a term called equivalent radius okay so that equivalent radius plays an important role in converting the linear speed into rotational speed okay so i am putting a term called re that is what effective rolling radius of the tire you can uh, see at the bottom effective rolling radius of the tire okay so what i am putting now re is equal to v by omega so see here instead of v by omega i am putting what re so in numerator i will put r e denominator r okay so this is the final expression for slip so slip can be found when you are going to uh, find two radius one is rolling radius of free rolling tire that is r then effective rolling radius of tire what is mean mean by this no effective rolling radius means tire is fitted into the vehicle and when it is uh, driven what happens to its uh, radius and this one is you can see free rolling uh, tire okay so you have to understand this uh, difference okay and uh, you see in this formula when angular speed of the tire is uh, zero that is when omega is equal to zero what happens see slip will be infinity okay slip will be infinity okay there is a input i am not getting any angular speed means what happen my omega is getting zero so what happen uh, slip is going to be infinity okay that is v by 0 that will be what infinity and uh, when v is equal to 0 there is my linear speed is equal to 0 what happen my slip is 100% okay my slip see you put v equal to 0 this term will go so 1 100% slip means i am having engine power but nothing translated into v i am not having what the translatory motion so you remember this omega is equal to 0 means slip will be infinity and omega uh, v is equal to zero means slip will be unrack okay so you copy this
okay now you can uh, see similar to slip no there is another term called uh, skid slip will happen driving torque okay when driving torque is going to take place when uh, skid will happen for uh, braking torque okay so skid will happen during a uh, braking uh, torque that is uh, you can uh, see what happens no uh, the same uh, thing okay that is uh, you'll be having a v and uh, we will be uh, describing about the uh, r omega okay so what happen no during a uh, uh, skid the tire will be traveling greater than free rolling that is called uh, skid so for anti locking uh, braking system i have to understand about this uh, skid okay so it is going to affect my uh, braking performance okay that is when you are uh, applying the braking torque now listen carefully see now i am getting the engine power like this when i am applying the braking torque opposite to this a torque will be applied okay so opposite to opposite to this a torque will be So what happens due to this? Uh, before entering into the contact region, my thread elements will be stretched because my thread element is a spring, no? So it will be getting a stretch before it is en entering into the contact area. So what happens uh, after applying the brake? The distance travel, no? It will be more compared to that of a uh, free rolling. Okay. So a slip, uh, you are having one uh, formula that is you can uh, see. in denominator i will have what b okay in denominator i will have uh, b and it is not r omega minus v b minus r omega listen carefully when skid is going to happen there is a linear uh, speed b minus r omega okay so you can uh, see now b minus r omega and denominator b. okay i will show in the next slide so now you can uh, see b minus r omega when you are uh, dividing by b you will be having what 1 minus r omega by b okay. so now we will understand the condition for uh, skid that is uh, i am saying a locked wheel locked wheel means what i am applying more uh, brake to that wheel so the angular rotation of the wheel is becoming what zero okay so the wheel is not uh, getting uh, rotated so omega will be zero okay omega will be zero when omega is equal to zero what happen my skid is 100% so i have to avoid okay so when the angular uh, speed of the tire is equal to 0 whereas b is not equal to 0 then it will pull that tire that tire will skid rubbing of the tire will take place i have to avoid this okay so 100% skid will take place so you have to remember this formula for skid i am putting what is that is equal to 1 minus r omega by b into 100% And omega is equal to zero. That is, wheel is getting locked. So what happened? My skid is what under percent. Okay. So my anti-lock braking system, no, it will avoid this skid under percent uh, skid. So based on the coefficient of friction, there is a road adhesion. Uh, it will be uh, uh, giving the appropriate pressure so that I can uh, prevent what skid. Okay. if i am not controlling in you know, no there will be no directional control and the stability of the vehicle will be lost and uh, stopping distance also will be more see this is the curve this is very very important you have to understand in uh, y axis we are having the coefficient braking effort coefficient okay then cornering force coefficient okay let me define what is braking effort coefficient so you can you able to read i think Braking effort coefficient is equal to braking force divided by normal load of tire. Cornering force coefficient will be cornering force divided by normal load of tire. <coughs> so you you might have understood now braking effort coefficient and cornering effort coefficient. It is going to get increased with the skid. Okay, skid means already I have told you. Okay, so skid varies from uh, zero to hundred percent. Zero means freely rolling. Okay, I don't have any constraint for my tire. 
the i am having what omega a sufficient value so when the skid is going to increase my omega is getting reduced the wheel is about to lock under pressure means omega is zero okay so in this you can uh, see what happens my braking effort coefficient when i am applying the brake okay the braking effort braking force is getting increased with the uh, skid then after that what happens it decreases okay and similarly my cornering force coefficient also you can see the variation so what is the desirable range i have to keep that is i have to keep the maximum of braking effort no so this one is the desirable range okay so i have to maintain uh, this amount of uh, skid so this will be the desired uh, range for braking effort coefficient okay so let us uh, see braking effort coefficient braking force by normal load of tire so this already we have discussed so when i am having this abs no i will ensure this braking force in the desirable range so that i will not provide the braking force so that uh, the wheel is about to lock i will be having what skid under pressure i will design my anti lock braking system to have the braking force say some value in this curve so that the skid will be less okay so you can uh, see uh, the function of abs uh, it, it has to prevent the tire from locking keep the skid of the tire within a desired range okay so here you can see with this will be the desired uh, then uh, what will happen uh, that is a uh, the tire should develop uh, the braking uh, force and uh, retain the adequate cornering force okay so this one i have to ensure so abs have been uh, devised in germany in 1980 so let us see the dynamics of tire during braking so by understanding this only you can uh, design what abs okay so when uh, someone is going to work in abs automobile engineer or mechanical uh, engineer will be playing a role in this calculation of the force optimization and other things whereas the electronics engineer will be uh, ensure that the control system is going to work to achieve the desired performance given by the automobile okay so you can now you can see the wheel is uh, getting uh, having a translatory speed v okay and you can see omega is a rotational uh, speed and i'm going to apply a braking torque see tp, TP is the braking torque okay so it is going opposite to omega so omega dot is what it is a retarding uh, thing okay and you can see at the center of the wheel the weight of the vehicle weight on this tire is getting acted and f is at the normal force okay most of the cases f is at will be equal to w and you can see r r is the radius of the tire and the braking torque when i am saying braking torque force into radius so tb into r Okay, so F B into ah uh, sorry ah uh, breaking torque is T B so T B is equal to F B into R. Okay, so F B I have shown here see at the bottom. So your yeah, traction force and retractive force will be acting at the contact between tire and the ground. Okay, you can see breaking force is acting at the contact between tire and ground. So F B is equal to nu into R. That is R here R is what the F is. so what we have to say no there is a the braking force indirectly depends upon what normal load okay so whatever uh, normal load depends upon weight of the vehicle okay and braking torque depends upon braking force okay. so please uh, go through this uh, sketch now you can see the braking force is called nu into f is it tb braking torque and braking effort is fb then moment This is what F B into R. And uh, you can uh, see this is the angular acceleration. That is in the sketch. I am showing you know. This is what angular acceleration. Okay. See why this uh, difference is uh, happening? You know? 
that is there will be difference between the two things there is a result coming in our breaking term actual breaking term applied to the b and the breaking term which is going to come due to the breaking force at the contact region between the tire and the ground so actually this two will be uh, same in theoretically but practically this two will not be same breaking torque which is acting opposite to the driving torque and the torque which is going to come due to the braking force that is fb fp into r the difference will be there okay so normally it will be same theoretically speaking both should be uh, same but what happen there will be the difference so due to this only we are having what this angular acceleration there is a, there will be a rate of change of angular speed with respect to that okay so i can uh, write this torque as i alpha what is i alpha alpha is angular acceleration so angular displacement you put double dot and if i'm going to write in terms of velocity angular velocity single dot okay so i alpha can be written i theta double dot i omega double dot okay so here find out the expression for angular acceleration that is omega dot that is equal to this uh, t there is a, this is coming due to the difference between tt minus tb okay tt minus tb divided by i divided by i suffix omega okay not i into omega i suffix w okay that is a moment of inertia of the rotating uh, parts okay now you can uh, see this tt is nothing but due to the braking force that is fb into r minus tp and this one is moment of inertia that is i can say mass moment of inertia of tire assembly about its center okay so you can uh, see when uh, fbr and uh, difference between this will be positive when tire is going to get accelerated and the difference will be negative when tire is going to get decelerated okay when tire accelerated most of the cases uh, what will happen the difference will be uh, positive whereas a uh, tire is going to get the uh, diesel rate this difference will be negative okay so you can uh, see the braking effort and uh, how to write this one there is f is equal to m you know so f b the braking force i can write what mass w by g and ac okay so this acceleration so there is a uh, you can write acceleration in the form of fp divided by w by g okay so w is a load carried by the tire and g is acceleration due to gravity so what i have to ensure there is a when when the skid of the tire during braking will happen that is a uh, this one ac will not be equal to r omega dot okay there is a you can know the skid formula 1 minus r omega by b into 100 not 300 percentage okay there is we can write b is equal to r omega a is equal to r alpha there is r omega dot okay so i am uh, writing uh, i am relating this uh, term so whenever uh, the braking torque is uh, large so the final conclusion you have to remember whenever the braking torque tb is uh, large what will happen that difference due to this difference my angular acceleration is i okay so the tire will be locked omega become zero okay whereas b will not be zero okay so what happens within a short time when i am going to supply i braking torque this uh, angular acceleration w dot no will be i soon the tire will come to rest okay the, the omega will become zero the tire will be locked okay so by having a control system that is a abs what will happen it will be monitoring the operating conditions okay so what is the braking torque i have to apply so this I, in abs i am going to vary this braking torque so that the lock will not happen so the braking torque is varied by what braking pressure okay so my abs will be doing this and you can see the wheel sensor okay a uh, wheel sensor is uh, fitted to the wheel and other uh, components we are having ecu okay so what are the parameter i have to measure no that is i have to measure angular uh, speed 
angular uh, deceleration then uh, linear deceleration angular deceleration is omega not okay so by this uh, the sensor will be how the sensor is going to work already you might have studied in a triple so it is electromagnetic pulses so we will be having a beats it will be uh, changing the magnetic field so voltage will be introduced based on the voltage i can uh, understand what is the speed of the I will be able to know angular velocity, then angular, uh, this one, acceleration. Positive means it is uh, acceleration, negative, it will be for the operating. So the signals will be transmitted to ECU. That and all already you might have studied. Okay. So in ECU, we will be having four models. There is signal processing model, and uh, there is a model for uh, predicting whether the tire is going to get locked or not. And after that, we check whether that have been accelerated. Okay. And there will be a model for uh, regulating the pressure modulator. So the sensor input will be measured with the threshold value, so that when it's about to lock, I'll be sending the signals to modify the pressure in the brake pipe. Okay. Once it is getting released and once it is coming to the safer zone, again I will increase the braking. So you can uh, see what are the pre-determined uh, values. You can uh, see 1.2, 1.6G. So next, uh, we are going to study this uh, stability control system. Okay. So this I am not uh, going to cover. You are going to study because uh, already you have studied in automotive changes. Okay. So let me give an overview. Okay. So I have taken from uh, this in uh, uh, so this is uh, a Wong uh, theory of ground vehicles by Wong. So in order to make you comfortable, everything I copied from the book and I kept it in my uh, PPT so that you can uh, refer the PPT alone. Okay. So from this you refer what is vehicle stability uh, control system. Okay, and this one is very very important. Operating principle of vehicle stability system. What it's going to do? measure the parameter compare the threshold value okay so you please go through this and you can uh, see the handling behavior of the vehicle so this and all you please uh, go through there is how the stability control system is going to function stability control system means i'm regulating yeah yeah is angular moment about uh, z axis okay that is i am maintaining the yeah stability control So you go through this. So we are having steer by wire, differential braking, and other things. Okay. This is all very easy. It is like uh, seminar topics. Okay. So you might have studied some topics in uh, vehicle uh, automotive chassis, traction control system. So go through this. So now already you might have studied a uh, TCS, traction control system. So for that also I am putting notes. Uh, if you are not comfortable with this, you can refer some uh, notes from the uh, website for explaining traction control system. Okay, this one I have taken from net. Okay, there is a slide share. So this is going to explain about traction control system. So depending upon the road, I will be wearing the traction control system. It is very simple. Mode. Nothing uh, there in the explain similar to your systems, okay? How it's going to function. And this one previously I explained you the physics in anti-lock braking system. Here it will be explaining you how the anti-lock braking system is going to work. Okay. So I explained you know, the desired range and other things. Okay. If you are not comfortable with the handwritten notes, you can uh, go through this search. Okay, you can uh, see this. Angular acceleration. This only I have explained. That. So everything uh, I explained. So this is the layout you have to draw for anti-lock braking system. Because you can uh, see sensor, control unit, modulator, wheel cylinder, master cylinder. And what you have to do now? Uh, there are some examples in in automotive mechanics by NKG. That is for prediction of vehicle performance. No. 
I have taught you one problem. Okay, that I have been uh, taken from uh, Aisle. Uh, you have to refer some more examples also in uh, NK three. See, these examples are nothing but what we have studied for VDs. Okay, so whatever uh, problems are going to come related to vehicle performance, you have to study this. Okay. And the last topic is this one. That is, uh, is going to relate this tractive force longitudinal slip. Okay, how the tractive force is related with longitudinal slip and braking effect, how it will be related with that slip. Okay, so for this, uh, I have uh, already have explained you the thread. You can see the normal pressure. Okay, this variation and that you can uh, go through the definition for slip, skid. Okay. So with this, uh, the unit is over, and this is somewhat uh, uh, that is you have to put more effort in understanding this. So you refer other systems. If you are able to go through this, you can go through. Otherwise, after completing all the units, I will come and uh, cover this uh, relation. Okay. So it is a standard university question that is you have to explain that is the relation between driving tack and the uh, slip, as well as the braking tack and skid. So with this, the uh, unit will be. So I think uh, you don't need to write this expression in the. Just uh, you write this. Uh, see, this expression. And this one. And uh, some expression up to this will be sufficient. And uh, you can draw this uh, curve. And no need to write this uh, expression. This is. Uh, it will be more uh, big. Okay. It will be like uh, reading a research paper. So this and all not necessary. First uh, four slides should be sufficient. Okay. But if you want to read uh, everything, you can read. And the similarly, braking tap, you put this one. Skit. Okay. For driving tap, first uh, three slides. For braking tap, from this you can uh, draw. And this sketch is for what? Braking. Okay. Two questions can be asked. Longitudinal uh, slip. Uh, that is a driving tap, braking tap, and the skip. Okay, so no need to write this uh, complicated equations. Okay, this one uh, you can uh, go through, depending upon your wish. If you want, you can go through. Otherwise, okay. So with this uh, unit four is over. The so next class I'll be starting unit five. Okay, so it is uh, not possible to cover uh, all the topics in a single unit. Okay. So in uh, unit four, what I have told you, there is uh, only the theory part. 